In 2007, the EPA tightened its regulations on heavy-duty diesel emissions. This forced all of our heavy-duty diesel OEM manufacturers to go back to the drawing board and add new componentry. One of the major components was a diesel particulate filter. What is a diesel particulate filter? How does it work? How can Peak's all-season diesel boost help alleviate these issues? I'm Grant Cavalier with Peak's business manager for diesel fuel additives, Steve DeVard. Um, on behalf of everybody here at Peak, we want to welcome you to our first live video in our Fluid Thinking Live series. Uh, this is an interactive event, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we encourage your comments, your questions. Uh, you can enter those to the right on your screen. Uh, below, there are some uh, sheets that you can toggle back and forth to help get some uh, answers as we go. Spec sheets, yep. Spec sheets. Steve. Yep. What is a DPF and how does it work? Great question. Thank you very much, Grant. Um, so diesel particular filter, I have a great video that I'd like to have our good looking camera guys show. So this is a transit bus. Uh, it's a heavy duty vehicle, stop and start. Doesn't get hot as hot as a on road fleet uh, vehicle is. But as untreated diesel fuel is entered through the system and, and, and it's colored brown, of course, the fuel is then goes into the engine um, through the injectors an untreated diesel fuel will create little deposits on that injector tip and then within the injector itself. And so once the fuel is sprayed into there, it can be ununiform. It will combust just like it, it, it's shown there. And it will combust and leave a lot of large uh, gas, uh, not gas, diesel uh, droplets that then form, that ends up being ash that then flows out of the exhaust system and into the diesel particulate filter. And that filter serves a role to keep that ash from going on into the exhaust system, onto the SCR, where it's then uh, the exhaust gases are catalyzed with the uh, diesel exhaust fluid. So, you know, left untreated, the DPF becomes blocked okay. um, and with excess particulates, which will then cause the engine to slow down um, and not operate. And then in certain circumstances, the onboard diagnostics on the computer will require the, the driver to conduct a regeneration to help unclog that DPF so that the engine can continue to operate the way it was intended to. Regeneration. Yep. I've heard this term a few different ways. Regen, regeneration, manual, stationary. What is a regen or regeneration? So regeneration is a process that was developed by the OEMs when they were you know, developing this new uh, system to help with the emissions. Uh -huh. um, and the OEMs developed this regeneration process to basically help uh, burn off any excess ash that shows up on the diesel particulate filter. Now there's two major types of uh, regenerations or regens is the okay. industry term. The first one is called active regeneration, which is just as it described, as the truck is driving down the road, the truck will all of a sudden get hotter. I mean, to you know, 700 to 1,000 degrees hotter, and that heat, along with they'll spray the system, will spray a little maybe a little diesel exhaust, uh, not diesel exhaust, a little diesel fuel on top of the DPF, uh -huh. and that the heat and that that little bit of fuel will help burn off excess ash that's sitting on this diesel particulate filter, which I'll show you in a second. So that kind of system generally happens with the on-the-road uh, long-haul fleets that they, while they're driving, the active regeneration occurs. Okay. The second type of regeneration is the more interesting one for me, which is the um, passive regeneration, or it's also called parked regeneration. And so what happens as the driver's driving along in their vehicle, um, sometimes it's a bus, sometimes it's, um, it might be uh, some type of uh, construction truck or what have you. Off-road. Off-road. Okay. All of a sudden, Grant, and it's, it's scary sometimes for the driver, all of a sudden this light shows up and our camera guy does it really well. I and you can too. see that little red light right there, uh, that red signal that looks like a puff of air going through a filter. That symbol comes up on the onboard, on the dashboard that says basically, Driver, you need to do a regeneration. You need to do a parked or a passive regeneration. Your DPF is not working properly. Okay. And so the driver then will notice that the vehicle is driving a little bit more slowly. Um, so he, need, he or she needs to then drive off to the side of the road or drive to a rest area and park it. And then once they're parked, they press that button. And once again, our camera guy is right on top of this. 
um, presses that button and basically the regeneration process, parked regeneration process will occur. And, and what it basically does is the engine gen runs idle very quickly, gets really hot, does the same thing as the active regeneration does, gets you know, maybe sprays a little bit of a diesel fuel onto the diesel, uh, onto the DPF itself, and basically helps burn away that excess ash that's formed on the diesel particulate filter. And so those are the kind of the two key, the two ways that regeneration can occur. But let me break this down, or let, let me break down the DPF a little bit more for you. Please do. Okay, so this is a diesel particulate filter. And as the camera guy definitely puts it down, and what you can see, it's a heavy piece of equipment. Our tech guy was trying to pick it up and, and struggled mightily because he's got weak muscles, I'm convinced. <laughs> but this is a, a, it's a steel casing filter, and inside it you can see the core, which is, um, has these thousands of little holes in there, and you can see a little black, which is the ash. This is a, a diesel particulate filter from a Detroit diesel engine from our friends at Kansas City Freightliner, Mike Slagle, the parts manager there, sent it to us. Um, and this is just an example of how a diesel particulate filter can get clogged with some ash. And in this core, which is not paper, it's heavy because it's made out of ceramic so it can handle the heat, but this, this these filters run through the entire length of the filter and ash can flow through the entire filter and eventually get stuck or get held up by the filter itself so that prevents the ash, the soot, those kinds of particulates from then flowing into the SCR uh, where the exhaust gases are, are supposed to be treated by the, def, uh, the diesel exhaust fluid. Um, but this is, a, this is just an example of what a DPF looks like and, and what we have seen you know, this one is, is probably one that needed to get regeneration, but we've seen cases um, wor with working with fleets, and if Sean, our good-looking camera guy, can cue up the next picture, this is an example of a diesel particulate filter when it gets really clogged. Okay. When a fleet customer says, or, or, or the driver ignores the, the regeneration process, um, it can get caked up to that point where then the DPF struggles to operate, and when it reaches this point where it gets almost like it can get to three inches of, of ash in there that if it's, un, if it's not treated or taken out, that, that, that vehicle is not operating the way the emissions standards wanted the vehicle to, to operate in, that means that thing will have to get replaced. So it's an important piece of the equipment. And what we've seen, and through talking with a few of our customers that have used our product, we have heard a lot of horror stories, so to speak, on, on DPFs and on, on, on uh, how it can affect their operations. We have a fleet, an oil field fleet based in Oklahoma, where they have about 70 trucks or so, Grant, and they were using untreated fuel, and they were getting about, and these trucks run about 24-7, they were getting about seven to eight regens across their fleet per day. And, and that regen okay. process could take up to 30, 40 minutes. Okay. So do the math. That's a lot of time where that vehicle is not operating, not making money for the owner. Um, and so that's a big problem for, for that type of application when vehicles aren't running properly. And, 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 and that's the kind of stuff that we've seen in that kind of application. Another application that we've had some good success in, but part of the problems that we are hearing, um, my good friend Mike Ostrowski from Lutech up in Milwaukee, um, he introduced us to uh, a bus fleet up in Madison, uh, Madison, Wisconsin, where they were literally, they were driving, the guy was driving on their bus on the road, and the light showed up on their dashboard. They had people, they had good looking people like yourself on the bus. They pull off to the side of the road. When that light comes on, he pulls, the driver pulls off to the side of the road, calls dispatch. You got a bunch of angry customers in your bus. They get another bus to come out because that bus has to do a regen. It's not going to drive. It's going to go very slowly. They get the other bus to come out. They load the passengers onto the new bus so they can go to point B. But that, then the, that bus either does the regen on the side of the road or drives very slowly back to the garage where they, do, they clean up the DPF or do their manual regen at the garage. Lots so, of headaches. So you said they drive slowly back to the garage. Yep. And just to kind of get back, so you're talking about two buses, two metro buses, yep. to service one group of clientele on a route. Right. And, 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 and if they didn't do that, they'd be on that bus for 30 to 40 minutes while the bus is doing a regen. They won't be able to get to where they need to on time. The buses have to be on schedule. It's bad enough that they had to do this. But it was a problem that that fleet manager was having such a great 
difficulty time that when Mike uh, and the Lutech guys were having a, a, a training seminar, they asked the question about, you know, DPFs and regens, the fleet managers raised their head, we have a big problem with that. Interesting. Yeah. So, I guess the million dollar question, how does Peak's all-season diesel boost help alleviate these issues? So, Peak all-season diesel boost is specially formulated to take care of deposits that form on critical engine parts in the engine. Let me show you uh, an injector here. So this is an example of a fuel injector. And our deft camera guy is going to move up closely to it. Not too close. You won't see my double chin then. <laughs> OK. So this is, a, this is an injector. And this is the pindle that sits within the injector. And this pindle moves within the injector to allow fuel to get sprayed out of the nozzle. Now, deposits will form on the pindle itself. They'll create a lacquer. that will create stickiness for this pindle, so it will impact the ability of this pindle to move within the injector. Inside the injector, deposits can form within the inside of that injector, which impact the ability of the pindle to operate as well. And then even more importantly, I'm doing this much better now, this tip of the injector, is, um, it has little holes about the size of a human hair, hair that Grant and I don't have anymore. <laughs> but those holes, if fuel, untreated fuel is, is flowing through here, deposits will form on, that, on, that, on those holes, impacting, impacting the spray pattern into the combustion chamber, which, as the earlier video shows, when you have... Um, uh, a, a spray pattern impacted, you get large droplets of fuel, that fuel doesn't burn consistently, uh, that unburned fuel becomes soot or ash, which then flows into the exhaust system, which is then picked up by the, the DPF. And so All Season Diesel Boost has detergents that are specifically designed to, to clean up deposits when, when they have formed on, that, on these critical engine parts, as well as keep them clean so the engine continues to operate and spray fuel in the manner that the original engine manufacturers intended. Excellent, excellent. So I have a video that kind of shows this a bit further, Grant. So Great. Uh, once Stick the camera guy catches up here, so we got the same bus. We got now treated all season diesel boost fuel, colored green, of course. It goes into the engine. You can see then the fuel flows through the injectors. The deposits that are formed are getting cleaned up. You get a nice spray pattern into the combustion chamber and Boom! A lot less deposits will form than what was on there previously. I mean, it won't completely cure all the deposits, but you can see there's significantly less ash going to the DPF yes. through, this, through this, uh, this drying, which means that that DPF can last longer and you'll have less, your, your fleets will spend less time doing manual regenerations of their, of their filter. So that's, that's the key benefit that we're talking about and it's a growing problem in the industry that's taking care of the DPF um, and, and we've seen through some of these examples like the the oil field fleet in Oklahoma they went after using the detergent that they find in all season diesel boost they went from 78 regens per day in their fleet of of trucks down to one per day which is a significant amount of uptime or less downtime however you want to do it but that that's money of that those machines are operating uh, versus having to sit and do the regeneration process our, our fleet up in Madison it's a government so they, they can't endorse any products here but anecdotally Mike and I have been talking with the fleet managers they virtually have no uh, uh, issues with uh, vehicles going on the side of the road now uh, having to do a manual regen, they've seen a significant drop in any regenerations, and it's, it's vastly improved their operation of their vehicles. Now, just I'll throw these last few barbs in because I think it's important too. This is a multifunctional product, the All Season Diesel Boost. It's a, it, it contains the detergents, but it also contains lubricity improver for fuel pump wear. It contains uh, certain versions of this, contains C-Tame for better cold starts and for smoother driving for the vehicle. Um, and, and, and so this is a product that takes care of a lot of issues that are facing the industry. But the biggest industry issue right now, and I was at a Detroit Diesel training session last week, is the managing of the DPFs. And if you can find ways to manage the DPFs from getting dirty over a longer period of time, fleets are, are interested in those kind of solutions. Right. So how do I get Peaks All Season Diesel Boost into my tank? Great, great question, Grant. So um, 
what the terminology that we use in the industry um, is splash blending. Okay. So what what the fleet manager or the fleet driver needs to do if the if they make the fleet driver responsible for additivation before they fill up the fuel tank with uh, with diesel fuel, literally take a 32 ounce container um, and pour that into the tank. Obviously, and, and put it into the tank, and then put the fuel on top of it, and it mixes it all around in the tank. That's splash blending, and that's how most of the customers, not necessarily 32 ounce, our, our fleet up in Madison, they use a 275 gallon tote that they have configured a way to uh, treat their tanks before they fill them up with fuel, and they, uh, but it's all done through splash blending. Our totes, if they, are, if a customer does have inline avization um, equipment at their facilities. Our totes are, are perfectly designed for those type of um, applications as well, but it's all splash blending. Great. So how do we help our distributors uncover opportunities? What questions should we be asking? What, what should we look for? My, my suggestion, folks, with, with talking to fleet customers is, is, first off, don't go straight to the additive. When, when you talk to customers, don't talk to the fleets that are long haul fleets. I think they, they, do, they deal with this through the active regeneration process. You're gonna get a better bang for your buck. You're gonna get more hit rates, so to speak, if you talk to customers that are uh, like the bus fleets, stop and start type applications, school buses, um, ag fleets, um, uh, construction fleets, oil fleets, any kind of fleet that does a lot of off-road or stop-start application, those are the type of fleets that are probably are having this problem. But don't go straight in and say, I got peak all-season diesel boost. Start with the questions. Start with questions that in the manner of, you know, are, are, ask them how many regens they're doing in their fleet per week. You know, are, how do they handle um, cleaning up their DPS? Um, what process do they do with that? What is the cost? What is the time? Try to get them to talk about the problem more. And then, then you start, once you get a better sense of the problem and how big of a, a pain it is, then you start talking to them about the fuel. Then you say, okay, are you using untreated fuel? And, and then if they do talk about what kind of fuel they're using, then the question goes to, and this is the kicker question, is if I offer you a solution that takes care or alleviates the problems that you're having with your DPS, with regenerations, and it's a problem that you can put into your fuel and cost pennies per gallon, is that worth it to you as a customer? And I'll say that approach, and, and you know, unfortunately I, could, I don't have Mike uh, mic'd into, into the conversation, that's the kind of conversation we've had with Madison Transit, and that's what sold them to our all-season diesel boost, and that's why they're using it today. Don't go straight in with diesel additive first, Go in with them talking about the problem first. It's a little longer of a sale process, I understand, but it's a process that if you get them to talk about the problem more, then I think you'll have a better success rate of selling our product to that customer. Now, I will say, just as a reminder, this is not a product that you pour onto the DPF to clean it up. This is a product that's meant for preventative uh, preventative measures. It, it's not going to clean up the uh, soot on, on, the, on the DPF itself. It's really meant to be put into the fuel to m reduce the amount of ash that comes out of the exhaust cycle, which means that you can basically, with that cleaner burn, you can elongate the life of your DPF as well as you have less manual regenerations required over the lifetime of that DPF. Sounds like it has a lot of benefits from fuel <coughs> consumption to cleansing to time to right perfect perfect yep um we have some questions all right uh looks like our first one is from Octa octavio in miami florida uh he asks how does it remove metallic deposits so the detergent is is it's designed metallic deposits uh, car carbon type deposits that are, that form on the injectors themselves. Basically, the detergent attaches to that deposit and pulls it out, um, and pulls it out, and then the, when it pulls it, the deposit off of the, the critical engine part, it then puts it into the combustion process where then it, it's, it's combusted and, and cleanly moved out of the system. Excellent. Uh, I got another one from Jeff in Elkhart, Indiana. How often do you need to use all-season diesel boost? So. All season diesel boost is, is the detergent and the level of detergent that we have in there, it will clean up deposits in one to two tanks. 
Okay. But if the deposits will form again when, if you switch back to untreated diesel fuels. So really it is meant to be in a continuous use process. It will clean it up. It will keep those deposits. It will clean up the deposits they have formed on the critical engine parts. But you need to continuously use it so that that engine keeps clean, which is the term in the industry, keeps clean, and therefore um, the engine operates the way it was intended to. Okay, great. Um, Ken from Omaha asks, what is the treat ratio for the product and is the concentration the same in the shelf offering as it is in drums and totes? So good question. Um, so great question. Our, so our two and a half gallon jugs, I have one right down here so, somewhere. Our two and a half gallon jugs our drums, 55 gallon drums, and our 275 gallon totes um, all have a treat rate of, if, if it doesn't contain cetane in it, it will have a treat rate of one gallon of additive to every 1,500 gallons of diesel. If it does have the cetane improver in there, which, which some customers like to add for smoother drives, better cold starts, then the ratio is one gallon of additive for every 1,000 gallons of, of diesel fuel. Now the packs, the 32 ounce packs that we have here that you'll find on the retail shelf, these are treated at, this, this bottle here will treat up to 100 gallons of, of fuel. So roughly when they're, when they're filling up their tanks or uh, before they go out, they should dump one to two of these into the tank to, um, to protect that fuel. Great, perfect. Uh, looks like that's all the questions. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your time uh, today. We appreciate the feedback. We appreciate you joining us. Uh, on behalf of everybody at Peak, thank you very much. Um, also, keep, uh, keep your eye out for our next Fluid Thinking Live uh, video uh, coming soon.